Let's go back and take a look at the we of we the people. Because now that the country was up and running, that we was including more people than ever before. It had always included white men of wealth and property. By the 1830s and 40s, less than 50 years after the Constitution was written, the definition was already expanding. In most states, we now included the hardworking farmer and laborer, who no longer needed to own land in order to vote. All over the country, the common man was finally getting his say and enjoying every minute of it. If you had any doubt, just look at Andrew Jackson. As the newly elected president, he was living proof that an ordinary American could rise to the top based on ambition, talent, and energy. It was during his run for the presidency that politics began turning from a spectator to a participation sport. There were parades and stump speeches, parties, and raucous debates sometimes spilling into the streets. The expansion of political rights inspired other groups like abolitionists and women to want their own voices to be heard. Reform was in the air. The definition of the we in we the people was continuing to grow, yet there were still inequities. Only a few states allowed married and single women to own property, and nowhere did women have the right to vote or serve on juries. As the country expanded west, Native Americans were forced to move from their homelands, in many cases at the point of a bayonet. And that hard-working laborer who no longer needed to own land to vote, well, in most states, he still needed to be white. As for the millions of black slaves who were at the mainspring of the southern economy, they still had no rights at all. No Despite these injustices, the country was on the difficult path toward equality. Must have been because off in the distance you could hear a sound, and it was coming closer like a train. What about us? What about us? What about us?